Greetings, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation episode 91. I'm Jeff, and if you're new here, welcome to your one-stop weekly shop for everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. This week, we're taking a look at every new indie game releasing on the eShop from November 15th through the 21st. And when we're done there, we'll check out the best indie deals available on the eShop to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. New episodes post on Tuesday with support from our friends at the Nintendo Village, and we've got streams on Thursday with Friday reserved for our quick show focused on the best deals for the weekend. If you're not already, hit subscribe so you don't miss a single thing as we head towards the biggest eShop deal season of the year. Don't forget to leave your feedback in the YouTube comments or join the Indie Conversation on Twitter at Nindy Nation. With all of that out of the way, let's do this thing. As always, we love checking out the week's upcoming releases, but since there's a few publishers who like releasing games without telling anyone, we always miss a few in between episodes, and we call those our neglected nindies. Thankfully, the list isn't nearly as long as it's been these last couple weeks, so as we kick off episode 91, let's start by taking a look at the eight nindies released since episode 90. The neglected Nindy worth considering this week gets this week's episode started right off on the right foot, because Metaverse Keeper by Circle Entertainment is a twin-stick dungeon crawler with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. The silliness of what you'll find as you hop between dimensions is complemented by a cartoony art style, and there's five different character classes to play as, plus online multiplayer, so there's a good deal of variety to help out with the replay value. At $13.49, Metaverse Keeper should be a well-rounded trifecta that doesn't do anything too exciting, but has a lot to offer in a polished package for a reasonable price. Sentry is described as a minimalistic twin-stick shooter, but it is so simple that it seems more like it's the result of some 24-hour game jam or something. You steer a triangle around and shoot other triangles, and it barely outclasses the original asteroids in presentation. It's brought to us by Rising Sun Studios and is only $249, but I think you can pass on this one. Super Punch is a generic top-down boxing game that looks like a mobile phone version of Rock'em Sock'em Robots. It's developed by Piotr Skolski and released for $1.99. The description claims this game has, quote, beautiful graphics, but uh, I'll let you come to your own conclusion on that one. The only other neglected Nindy this week that seems like it could have some merit is Squeakers, which dropped for three bucks. It's a falling block style puzzle game, but the approach is pretty unique. Instead of falling blocks, you are frantically building a tower to outrun a rising tide, and you can do so alone, with a friend, or against a friend. The co-op mode looks like it could be a lot of fun. This is our first time seeing a game from Marcin Skierski, and it's a solid first impression. If nothing else, I definitely appreciate the studio's name, Bore in Games. Get it? Microids just keeps cranking out those My Universe games, which are essentially crappy mobile time waster games, but with a bit of effort and a fresh coat of paint. This week's version is My Universe Cooking Star Restaurant, which doesn't really make grammatical sense now, does it? From what I can see, it's Cooking Mama, but without any of the personality. And it's $30. The last three neglected Nindies should not be considered under any circumstances, and as such are this week's Nindy No-Nos. Up first is Stencil Art by Cubic Games, and I really expected better out of them. Select a stencil template, rub your finger over your screen and fill in predefined colors or styles, and then look at the poop emoji on your screen and ask yourself why you wasted $2 on this. Piotr Skalski, who is responsible for the Super Punch title we just discussed, also released Slash Ninja, and it's Fruit Ninja, but 10 years later and devoid of any charm, quality, or personality for $2.49. Last and definitely most certainly least, brought to us by the masterminds at Sebek behind such feats as drums and piano, comes the thrilling sequel, Guitar. Here's the thing. If you take $10 and set it on fire, you can get a tiny bit of warmth, a little bit of light, 
and you can keep 70 megabytes free on your Nintendo Switch's storage. But if you really want to waste that Hamilton, there's also Guitar by Sabek. It goes without saying that if you like trifectas, Metaverse Keeper may pique your interest, and you may be curious about Squeakers too. But otherwise, we're all probably better off saving our digital dollars for one of this week's new releases. Sound off in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation to let me know what you think. Speaking of new releases, that's where we're headed next and get comfy because as usual, there's a bunch to cover. Here are the 26 new releases hitting the eShop from November 15th through the 21st. Did you know that Jimmy Kimmel is the newest host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I had no idea, but I learned that when I was trying to figure out who the host in Microid's new version of the game was supposed to look like, and I think it's actually supposed to look like the previous host, Chris Harrison. Look, it's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and it's on the Switch for 30 bucks. That's way too much money, even with a handful of modes available. There is a 100-player online mode, which I bet would be a ton of fun, but good luck finding that many people online to actually fill a game. Wales Interactive has released quite a few mediocre games on the Switch, but they're best known for their full-motion video titles like Late Shift and The Complex. Instead of a mystery or sci-fi thriller, though, on November 17th, we get Five Dates, which is an interactive rom-com, and the whole premise revolves around finding your match on a dating app. It's a pretty cool idea, and the studio's other FMV releases have been fairly well-received, so I'm glad that Five Dates launches for only $12.99, because it looks like a fun little romp that stands out in a sea of interactive narratives. The description for Pure Pool by Vufu Studios reads... Enjoy the most realistic and immersive simulation of Q Sports on Nintendo Switch. With stunning 1080p visuals and more ways than ever to play pool and snooker. From what I can see, those claims seem valid because this game looks surprisingly realistic. There's a ton of modes to play and online options that even include the capability for you to play against an online profile of your friends. Kind of like Drivatars in the Forza Motorsport series on Xbox. Everything about Pure Pool is impressive, and it drops on the 17th with a 20% discount for only $11.99. And here's one that looks super cool. Mars Horizon mixes all kinds of turn and real-time strategy elements into a simulation where your goal is to ultimately get to Mars. The game is developed by Oroch Digital in partnership with the European Space Agency, the ESA, and published by the Irregular Corporation. You'll build, maintain, and expand your base, research the technology you'll need, run missions from Mission Control, and it's all in all pretty deep and it looks friendly and manageable. I'm really impressed with Mars Horizon, and if you want to plan your own mission to Mars, you can get started for $17.99. The Serious Sam Collection lands on the eShop November 17th and includes the HD remaster of the first two games, as well as the more recent third entry. If you've never played a Serious Sam before, it's basically a level-based horde mode where you're just shooting everything that moves and causing tons of destruction, all with a light-hearted tone and a general goal of having more explosions than a Michael Bay movie. They're really fun and they look excellent on the Switch. The collection is published by Devolver Digital and launches for $29.99. And while I do recommend this collection, especially if you like mindless FPS action, Devolver usually has across-the-board 50% discounts for Black Friday, so I'd wait to see if you can get this on the cheap when the sales come around. Even at full price, though, $10 a game is totally worth it. Turnox releases the only new game on Wednesday the 18th, and it's a retro-styled dungeon crawler with an emphasis on collectible card battling. As such, Nexoria includes procedurally generated dungeons, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. The overall presentation kind of looks like if the Oregon Trail was anime-inspired, which is a neat approach. And especially at only $4.99, there's a lot of game here. The Big Thursday Drop has 14 new Nindies this week and is kicked off with Brawl Chess by Red Deer Games. As you'd imagine, it's chess but with a bunch of cartoony characters that fight while you play chess. Unfortunately, it seems pretty rudimentary and the graphics very much use that kind of art style that you see in cheap mobile games. So even though it launches with a 30% discount, I think $6.99 is a bit too much. 
You know, I think over the past 90 episodes, I have covered the release of every Grisaia Phantom Trigger game, and this week, Prototype drops Grisaia Phantom Trigger 5 for $14.99. I think this interactive novel series is based around an academy that trains anime schoolgirl soldiers, and this entry introduces a whole new cast of characters. Azure Break Heroes is a 2D dungeon crawler with real-time combat about escaping a prison world, and is developed by Piotra Paurachevich. The publisher is Silesia Games, and I don't think I've recommended too many of their titles. But while it's very basic in presentation, Azure Break Heroes is only 7 bucks, so it might be a decent pickup on sale down the road. And it's our third title this week, so far, to feature procedurally generated dungeons, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! D3 Publisher went to the iOS App Store and grabbed some cheap mobile games and then threw them all on the Switch with The Casino, Roulette, Video Poker, Slot Machines, Craps, and Baccarat. And it's 10 bucks. And it's crap, not the card game. Yeah! Crazy Soft also went to the App Store and grabbed just a load of kids games. You know, the ones where all the characters have those freaky, lifeless eyes. If you're a parent, you know what I mean. They threw all those games together in a bundle for $12.95 and called it Educational Games for Kids. <laughs> There's actually a ton of games here, and they're ranged from toddler to middle school, and it doesn't look all that bad besides the art style, but uh, I see no reason for this to be on the Switch. Have you ever heard of Eldrador Creatures? There's a game published by Wild River Games that's dropping for 30 bucks, and despite my best googling, while I find a bunch of pages that treat Eldrador Creatures as if it is a big franchise, I can't tell what the hell it is outside of this game. As a game, Eldrador Creatures is a one-on-one -on -one mythical beast fighting game, but I can't tell how you actually control it. Basically, what I'm saying is there's this $30 game about this brand or franchise or whatever that I know nothing about, and despite giving it the old college try, I can't figure out what the hell you do in this game. I can tell you this, though, it does not look good. But it doesn't even come close to this next one. As mentioned recently, there seems to be a new trend of games built around the concept of those escape rooms. And, you know, that's probably a pretty good concept to translate into a game. But Alignment Sharp have used that premise to create one of the worst looking games I have ever seen. It's called Cape's Escape Game, and it stars a ghost named Cape that probably took 12 seconds to draw, and the rest of this first person puzzle barely makes the cut to be a PlayStation 1 game. It's $3 flat, and definitely one you can skip. Cake Bash, however, is a game that was shown off during Nintendo Life's recent indie game presentation, and it looks really fun, despite being yet another ZANY MULTIPLAYER PARTY GAME WITH A GIMMICK! The gimmick in this one is that everything is based on desserts and other food. I feel like zany multiplayer games based around food has enough entries to be its own genre, but the team at High Tea Frog and Coat Sync Software seem to have the title to beat. It looks great, it has a deep primary gameplay mode, and a bunch of mini-games to keep things interesting. If you're feeling this fight of foods, it'll set you back $19.99, but you can try it for free, as there's a demo already live. Another title with a demo is giving me serious mist vibes, and that's Dreamo for $13.49 by Hypnotic Arts, and another game published by Pineapple Works, who we've started to see a lot of lately. Dreamo is a first-person narrative puzzle adventure, so like Mist, but with a low-poly visual style that creates a real dreamlike appearance. Pun definitely intended. Try out the demo, piece together some long-forgotten memories, and see for yourself if it's worth picking up for $13.49. Speaking of dreamlike visuals, if you were to take a bunch of LSD and pass out, my guess is that your dreams might look like Art School by Red Deer Games and Glander Co. This is another one where I have no idea what this game is. Supposedly, you're making art, and it can actually teach you some technique? Not sure how it does that. But it's super trippy, and the trailer alone includes sound design that, on its own, is nightmare-inducing. Here, listen. So, uh, man. 
This one's weird. It's seven bucks and uh, so uh, seven bucks. Yeah. Carmenite, save me! Hey, Carmenite looks cool, and it's got a nice short description. Carmenite is a fast-paced 2D side-scrolling platform action game with stylish combat. Find hidden items in the stages, collect different spells, defeat the enemies as you gain more experience, and enjoy the overall platform action game style. Not the best grammar, but I'll give Ultramarine Soft a pass because I like what I'm seeing here. I don't think it's a roguelike, maybe it is, but it looks similar to a Dead Cells or Forgone, just in terms of visuals and looking at the gameplay. It's just decidedly more, uh, indie. And it's $8.99? Hey, this might be a good one to try out for Nindies at Night this week. I'll pick it up and I'll let you know on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Clockstone Software struck gold when they created the original Bridge Constructor game and have gone on to make a bunch of them since. The Portal version is probably my favorite. It's a brain-teasing physics series where you, as the name would suggest, construct bridges. And it's a lot like the early indie darling World of Goo. This week, Clockstone releases Bridge Constructor The Walking Dead. And what's really cool about this version is the new twist that it adds. You're running from zombies and have to cross a gap, so you have a limited amount of time to build a structurally sound bridge to escape across. But since zombies are following you, you also have to build a bridge in a way that will allow you to leverage it to send the zombies falling to their death, and it looks like fun with me knowing nothing about the TV or comic series. Head Up is publishing the title, and it drops for $13.49. So if you like what you're seeing here, you can get a little taste as a couple of their other entries have free demos on the eShop, but unfortunately not this one. The last three weeks in a row have had some version of Outbreak release. Why they released horror games four weeks in a row in November instead of October <laughs> is completely lost on me, but this week we're getting the original Outbreak called just Outbreak. It's almost a Nindy trifecta, but it's more structured stage by stage and is a top-down co-op survival game where you race against the clock to escape whatever facility you're in before it's destroyed. I bet this is a lot of fun with a friend, but you're going to need to be in the same room because it does not include online multiplayer. Like the other titles, though, Outbreak is developed and published by Dead Drop Studios, and this one launches for $11.04. The last game this week for the Big Thursday drop is the epitome of shovelware. Yet another game released by Piotr Skalski. I think we're starting to see what this publisher is all about. Fifteen little mini games with a visual style that looks like a little kid drawing with crayons. I'll admit the visuals are a bit charming, and the game is only five bucks, but come on. Can we stop with these things already? <laughs> I just realized I was trying so hard to get through the game, I forgot to mention it's called Party Games 15 in 1. So now you know what to avoid. On Friday, November 20th, we round out the week with six titles, starting with a pirate themed adventure fit for the whole family. Captain Sabretooth and the Magic Diamond is a $35 game that throws just about every kind of gameplay mechanic into this kitchen sink of a game. Platforming, firing cannons, racing down a river, it's probably pretty fun, but Raven Studio is crazy if they think $35 is a wise price to hit the market with. Who published this? Zordix? What is that? A rejected Power Rangers villain? Ah! After 10,000 years, I'm free! It's time to conquer Earth! This might be a stretch, but... <laughs> Have any of you ever seen that super weird toilet commercial about unicorns pooping? Let's see, it's called The Squatty Potty. Go look up their commercial, it has over 38 million views on YouTube. Just go, really, go watch it, I'll wait, this is important. So next up, we have Fantasy Friends, and my best description for it is that this game is unicorn poop. It is one of the lowest budget, take care of a pet games I have ever seen. It looks so bad that it could pass as a port from the original DS. It's from another unicorn poop newcomer, just for games. What is up with all of the shovelware studios using all caps for their names, by the way? 
And if you thought all of that was bad, they want $29.99 for this pile of rainbow splattered feces. Baltoro Games probably just thought it looked cool, but I'm still going to read it as it is written. Their game this week is S-N-I-P-E-R Hunterscope. It's a cartoony sniper game that looks pretty fun, if I'm being honest. But here's the thing. It's a port of a free-to-play mobile game, and they are charging $15 on the Switch. Plus, you still have to buy the additional zombie DLC. This kind of stuff really shouldn't even be on the Switch. But it is to be expected, because like their motto goes, Here at Ball Toro Games, we save you and your money. Next up is Fail Gummies. No, I'm sorry, that says Fall Gummies. It's $5.59 by Prison Games, and you should not buy it, but (laughs) I still want to read the description. Fall Gummies is a relaxing, colorful 3D puzzle game. The story takes place in a fantastic world of happy jellies. Unfortunately, one day a huge meteorite hit the planet, pushing it towards the black hole. It sucked up all the emotions out of the planet and then collapsed. Help our little friends to regain their happiness by collecting the magical essence through the labyrinth. For some reason, that reminds me of the happy-go-lucky little kid show in The Simpsons. God, what was that called? Happy Tree Friends or something? No, I think that's something else. Let me know what it is. Boombit is back at it again with a game that is probably a garbage mobile port, but I kind of want to play it. It's called Ramp Car Jumping, which doesn't even make sense, and it's an anime visual novel about two dogs who meet in a forest and discover they have otherworldly powers that can only be activated when they engage in loving embrace. No, I'm, no, I'm kidding. It's called Ramp Car Jumping. You pick a vehicle and fly down a ramp, soaring in the air to earn points, cause destruction, and all of that stuff. There's a course builder mode too, which is what I'm interested in, and I like that it blends 2D and behind-the-car camera angles depending on whichever works best at the time. Other than basically being a ski jump game, there's nothing else to it, and it's $11.24, so I will not be taking part at that price, but if the game drops to a dollar or less, I bet my kids and I could have a bit of fun with it. And as usual, the final new release for the week is by Rataleka, and they're taking a break from the visual novels to give us Mice-topia, a pixelated Metroidvania starring a cute little mouse for $4.99. I had a lot of fun with their other recent exploration platformer, Two Parsecs from Earth, and the visual style of Mice-topia looks a lot like Daggerhood, another solid Rataleka game. With those two titles fresh in my mind, I'm looking forward to checking this one out and just might add it to the list for Nindies at Night this week as well. That's a pretty good week, much better than the last couple weeks at least. I'm walking away digging the puzzler game Squeakers, the platforming game Mystopia, the simulation game Mars Horizon, and I'm genuinely curious about the rom-com game Five Dates. What about you? Let me know what you're adding to your wish list in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation. The deals have been fairly slim lately, but I like that because it's forcing me to recommend games that maybe you haven't seen before on Nindy Nation, and that's a good thing for everyone. This week, there's a couple of deals that I mentioned during last week's Friday afternoon special, and while I try to avoid the redundancy, the deals are just so good, I want to make sure everyone has a chance to grab them. Before episode 91 sails off into the sunset, let's take a look at the nine Nindies at their lowest price ever through at least November 21st. Skybolt Zack is a wildly unique idea and a super cool game. It looks like a Mega Man game, but it's almost a rhythm game dressed up as a platformer. You run and jump and shoot, but there's color-coded icons all over the levels that, if you press the right corresponding button, sends Zack flying across the level. You've really got to see it to understand it, but Skybolt Zack is an absolute blast and it's half off this week for $9.99. You know what we need? More dogfighting games. Specifically, I want Microsoft to remake Crimson Skies. We don't have that yet, but this week, the next best thing is Red Wings Aces of the Sky. It looks great, and it has a storyline that revolves around famous airplanes throughout history. If you like flying around in historical airplanes and shooting things down, don't miss Red Wings while it's 75% off for just $4.99. 
A fairly recent release that didn't get enough attention is the Cubic Games published Death's Hangover, and right now, it's half off for $2.49. This breakout clone comes with a bunch of new additions that modernize the formula without overcomplicating it, and it's wrapped around a hilarious story about, well, death nursing his hangover. Do you ever find yourself moving things around in your house and you feel like you're playing a real-life version of Tetris? If you get that feeling <laughs> and you like it, you'll get a lot of it with Packmaster, the puzzle game about packing your suitcase as efficiently as possible, and you can pick this one up also half off and also for $2.49. One of the games covered on Friday is one of my personal sleeper hits for 2020, and that's Towaga Among Shadows, which I've always thought was a bit too pricey, but it's a complete no-brainer while it's $3.74, a 75% discount. It's a beautiful twin-stick shooter where you are usually standing still as you shoot down waves of incoming enemies. Don't sleep on this game. In 2020, everyone could just use a bit of chill, you know? And I happen to think that Abzu is a great way to throw on a game and just chill out for a couple hours. It's a game about deep sea diving and is, for the most part, just a really relaxing experience that'll stick with you after you've finished. Now, this isn't going to change your mind about these kind of games, so if you never liked games like Flower or Journey, then it's probably not for you. But if the thought of swimming around the ocean and watching a light but interesting story unfold is appealing to you, then give Absu a shot while it's 90% off for a buck 99. Another game from last week's Friday afternoon special is The Bug Butcher, a side-scrolling shooter where you run left and right and shoot things flying above you. The presentation and overall level of polish is on full display here, and it includes multiple gameplay modes as well as two-player co-op. It's a bit of an older game, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't get it, especially when it's also a buck 99, a discount of 75%. Lost Wing is one of those games that probably wouldn't exist if it weren't for the indie scene. It's a space shooter that feels similar to a tougher, more tunnel-focused Star Fox, but it's built as an endless runner, and it's a lot of fun. Lost Wing just released over the summer, and it's already half off for $3.99. And we introduce the final game of discussion this week with a little story. In 1993, a European development team was building Shenandoah for the Amiga, and it was going to be one of the preeminent side-scrolling shooters on a platform already full of great candidates. Alas, the game was never completed until a couple of years ago when one of the original developers found the source code and realized it was nearly complete. Now, 27 years later, 1993 Shenandoah is available for the Switch, and right now it is 80% off for $2.59. It's a great little shmup. To me, it feels like it belongs on the TurboGrafx-16 alongside games like R-Type. It's cool because it isn't just a new game with a retro influence, it's actually a new retro game. I think if you play any side-scrolling shmups, you owe it to yourself to pick this one up. I think this is going to be an expensive week for a few of you out there. But don't blame me. Don't come to me when your spouse is saying all the money is gone. Rather, get into the comments section now and shout out what you're proud to be spending your hard-earned digital dollars on this week. And rest assured, if you end up broke and homeless, you'll at least have a great selection of indies on your Switch? But otherwise, that's it for this week. This feels like the most normal week we've had in a while, which is good because in a week or so, we're gonna have a massive Black Friday sale and I'm still debating exactly how to cover it. As you heard, there's a couple titles out there that I might pick up for Nindies at Night this week, so come join us this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern, and let me know if there's anything that you'd particularly like to see, because I'm always open to suggestions. And don't forget about the Nindy Nation Friday afternoon special where we break down the best indie deals available as we head into the weekend. New episodes of Nindy Nation arrive on Tuesday, and it would mean the world to us if you could click the like button if you do indeed enjoy this content. Also, subscribe if you haven't yet. About half of you aren't subscribed, and while I'd love to guilt trip you about it, I have a feeling the people who listen to this part of the show are probably already subscribed. 
If you are, thank you. If you're looking for Nintendo content outside the realm of Nindies, our friends over at the Nintendo Village are cranking out daily articles, reviews, features, and more podcasts and shows over on their YouTube channel. You can find everything they do over at thenintendovillage.com, and we thank them for their support with the Nindy Nation podcast feed. Next week is still a little up in the air. I'm sure we'll have a show, but I'm not exactly sure if it'll hit the same day. I'll keep you posted on Twitter, so follow me at Nindy Nation, because there's a good chance we might do a shorter episode up front, followed by a massive deal special for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Thanks again for stopping by this week, for liking, subscribing, and sharing us with your friends. Until next week, citizens, I'm Jeff, this has been Nindy Nation Episode 91, and remember, no matter what type of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.